Netflix earnings, they are imminent. Our Julia Borston standing by with everything you need to know, and you will hear from her momentarily. We also have Virtus's chief investment strategist, Joe Terranova, and SVB Shannon Sakosha. She owns Netflix. They're here to break it all down. We're going to also kick around this rally in stocks, get their view on how long it can really last, especially in light of those late day breaking Apple headlines about a cut in iPhone production. Stocks lost a little bit of momentum on that news. They did rally back, though, and finished for uh, a really strong couple of days. So, Shan, we're waiting on Netflix, and the numbers are crossing as we speak. We can pop up the stock, and we'll show you that. And I said our expert, Julia Borson, is going through this. We're going to have all the analysis on the other side. And you can see it looks to be an initial move higher in the OT. But what, uh, what do you want to hear? Uh, we definitely want to hear uh, more than a million subs this this uh, quarter. We want to see four million subs for the fourth quarter. But most importantly, we want some clarity on the ad tier. They've priced it below Disney Plus's lower um, ad tier, and so what we're looking for is: Are we going to get uh, some ex um, some anticipated estimates around? what that ad tier is potentially going to cannibalize. Um, if we look at where the valuation is, though, Scott, we think that it's, it's reset to an area that really is coincident uh, with 5% revenue growth, which is what we're looking for on a long-term basis. Yeah, you see the stock uh, really popping higher. Julia, is, do I have this number right? Did they do 2.4 million subs in the third quarter? Yeah, so that was the key thing here. Netflix beating on the top and bottom line. But before I get to the earnings and revenue numbers, we need to look at the paid net additions. The company adding 2.4 million streaming paid net additions. That's versus expectations of the addition of about 1 million. They had been guiding to 1 million. The guidance also better than anticipated. Netflix guiding to the addition of 4.5 million um, paid subscribers in the fourth quarter. Analysts have been looking for around 4 million, so better than expected as well. And the company beating estimates on the top and bottom line with earnings of three dollars and ten cents versus the 213 estimated and revenues of 7.93 billion a hair ahead of the 7.84 billion estimated we see the stock is up about eight percent on that news so really want to dig in here to this report and figure out what those factors are that are causing a rebound to growth because remember scott netflix lost about 1.2 million subscribers between the first and second quarter now they're showing they're returning to growth we'll be back in a bit with yeah. more yeah, you please come back uh, once you go through that far better than feared. I mean, that's the bottom line when you take a look at this. I'm going to come right back to you, Shan, because now you got, as we said, one million sub adds the estimate. They go 2.4 after two quarters in a row of losing subs. Absolutely. And I think one of the things that we're looking at here is potentially some makeup from the first couple of quarters where we had those disappointing numbers. Most importantly, if you look at 2023 and you look at the potential for free cash flow generation in this stock, you're going to be able to drive some earnings. We might have a little bit of headwind in terms of margin because they have a growing and important international business. But these numbers are, are blockbuster numbers, especially with the fact that we just have stranger things to really drive content right now on the channel. Joe, you used to own it. I did. You sold it a handful of months ago. Sure uh, look, did. it was a seven hundred dollars stock. Well, so it, it came way back down to earth, but it seems to be rebooted lately. Okay, so a, a, a year ago I sold the stock. What What's great about this earnings report is number one, it's a return to growth. Uh, they're able to overcome the currency headwind, and I think there's a significant currency headwind for Netflix to the degree of nearly a billion dollars. Uh, but I, what I like about this is now the technical setup, because now you're, you're finally getting back into that price gap. Remember, the April earnings report was brutal. You had the stock decline from 330 down to 250, and it kind of wallowed at, at you know, the bottom of the bathtub uh, below 250 since then. We made the low in May. Now you're finally getting a little bit of a technical breakout. This is a stock that you want to buy on strength. This is a stock that you want to see the growth returns, the technical momentum returns. That's when you buy it. And I would be inclined to do so. I just need to hear on the conference call that we've got uh, a little bit of confidence looking forward here. Oh, I mean, they're going to tell you uh, what they're saying here thus far is they think they're on a path of reaccelerated growth. And Julia, I'll come back to you. Interesting, they added customers in every region, and the majority of those new customers came from Asia. Uh, what more do you see? 
Yeah, I mean, also interesting here that the revenue forecast and the subscriber forecast um, is not based on the addition of this new ad-supported service. Um, they say that the paid net ads of that four and, four and a half million number assumes that they experience usual seasonality and also the impact of the strong content slate. They also talk about macroeconomic weakness and less than normal visibility. They also here in the letter talk about foreign exchange headwinds. But they say, while we're very optimistic about our new advertising business, we do not expect a material contribution in Q4 2022 as we are launching our basic with ads plan intra-quarter and anticipate growing our membership in that plan gradually over time. So they're making clear that that's not what's driving the uh, better than expected forecast. And they say they want to give their prospective new members more choice, not switch members off their current plans. And members who don't want to change will remain on their current plan without ads at the current price. So that is really making it clear here that they're trying to add more subscribers rather than to use this service to minimize churn. Um, one other interesting thing here, I just want to point out that they throw a little bit of shade at their rivals um, it, very much towards the top of the release here. They say competitors are investing heavily to drive subscribers and engagement. The building a large successful streaming business is hard saying we estimate they are all losing money with combined 2022 operating losses well over $10 billion versus Netflix's five to six billion annual operating profit. So trying to make clear here, Scott, that they've been at this for a long time um, and see that as a major advantage.